desperate mission of mercy flies over the Congo jungles toward Stanleyville. American furnished planes rush Belgian troops to the city of terror where Congo rebels threaten to murder all hostages in their hands. Paratroops have preceded the rescuers and Congolese government ground forces are simultaneously closing in from the south. It had taken the paratroops exactly four minutes to seize and secure the airport before the planes come in for a landing. Congolese President Moise Chambé calls the 525 Belgians emergency troops whose actions were authorized for humanitarian purposes. Arms, ammunition and supplies, including some of the very newest kinds of jeeps, are quickly unloaded, for time is of the essence. But for all the speed and efficiency of the operation, to many it comes too late. Even as these men are fanning out toward the nearby city, the Simas, or Lions as the rebels are called, are butchering their hostages in the first of a series of massacres of an extent and savagery the 20th century had thought was something of the dark past. The entering troops find the streets of Stanleyville quiet with the quiet of death. Sema leaders have fled, leaving behind them their bloody handiwork. Among the victims are Dr. Paul Carlson and Phyllis Ryan, American missionaries. The rebels, too, suffer casualties. Weapons found on some bodies are reported to be of red Chinese make, and Peking is known to have been abetting the rebels from its embassy in neighboring Burundi. Survivors are gathered up for evacuation. Not all are white. Sima Fury is directed also against Congolese loyal to the government. Refugees gather at the airport waiting to be airlifted to Leopoldville. Every hour brings word of new atrocities beyond the slaughter of the first 29 found in downtown Stanleyville. Paratroops pressing on to other cities find similar grim evidence. Reports of the number of dead or wounded leap almost every hour and probably will continue to do so. The rescued are in varied stages of shock or injury. Some of the refugees who possibly did not observe the carnage seem happy just to be alive. A family is numbed by grief or terror. While an old lady is almost hysterically grateful to her rescuers. Some babies are saved, others not for the Seamas were no respecters of age or of innocence. The mother is frantic to reach the safety of the plane. Now the same plane that brought the soldiers in takes off for Leopoldville. Many of its passengers will stay here only long enough to transfer to planes homeward bound for Belgium. First to be taken off are the dead. A U.S. Marine Guard of Honor is waiting to drape the bodies of the two Americans with their country's flag. The estimated numbers of those brought out in these airlifts range from 1,200 to 2,000. There are all types and nationalities. President Chambé greets them before taking off to confer with French President de Gaulle, then to the United Nations. For the rescue of these pitiful and guiltless people, the United States, Belgium and Britain are, as to be expected, accused by communist nations of aggression. Yet their lives have been in increasing peril since the United Nations peacekeeping mission pulled out at the end of June. Many have known imprisonment and torture since then. One woman is in an obvious state of deep shock.
The rescue mission lasts only four days as scheduled. As soon as the troops leave, the rebels are again to sweep into Stanleyville. Still remaining in mortal danger are hundreds, perhaps a thousand, in inaccessible parts of the jungle. More bloodbaths may be expected before the agony of the Congo is ended.